Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game Tidicom video, we're going to be discussing the Scorpio, which naturally is the upgraded Xbox One G4 release holiday 2017. Microsoft, in a rather stunning piece of PR, um, they actually announced the Scorpio during E3 2016. And this announcement had a two stroke effect. First of all, it allows Microsoft to stay in the public eye, which effectively took the wind out of Sony's sales with the PlayStation 4 Pro. But the other bonus effect was that it allowed them to jump ahead and control the inevitable set of leaks which were going to start popping up over the coming months. And of course, that plagued the PS4 Pro at the time known as the Neo. Now, we have a few basic figures of the Project Scorpio. Uh, the GPU performance being six T flops, 320 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, and a rather nondescript eight core processor. Now, if we take a look at the trailers or the images of the Xbox One SOC, we know that it's most likely um, showing off a 320 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth with 12 gigabytes of RAM, and naturally, that's probably around 8,000 megahertz uh, GDDR5. However, there has been a couple of interesting comments from Microsoft's Albert Pinello. I'm going to read out the quote to you all, and then I'll let you jump on the relevant bits. We had to pick a number. Why did we choose 6 teraflops? Why did we choose 384 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth? What's the point of those numbers? The point of those numbers was to deliver Xbox One quality games in 4K. That's the point of those numbers, but we're not going to dictate to developers of how they were to use their power. So we did one. So one of two things happened. Um, judging from this, the first is that Pinello himself just simply misspoke during the interview. So in other words, he meant to say 320 gigabytes per second. But he simply screwed up, and for some reason, the figure 384 was buzzing through his head, and he simply said that. Now, I'm not sure how the interview was conducted. It's possible it was done via phone or via, you know, text. Now, if it's done via email, in those instances, it's, you know, proofreading, and sometimes it can be changed or autocorrect could happen. So that's definitely one possibility. The other possibility is Microsoft have opted to slightly bump the specs of the Scorpio, specifically in this instance, the bandwidth. We'll get more into that in just a second. However, I do want to also go through a second part of this particular interview. I think there are a lot of caveats they're giving customers right now around 4K. This is in relation to Sony's PlayStation 4 Pro. They're talking about checkerboard rendering and upscaling and things like that. And there are a lot of asterisks in their marketing around 4K, which is interesting because we thought about what spec we wanted for the Scorpio. We were very clear we wanted developers to take the Xbox One's engines and render them in true native 4K. And that is why we picked the number. That is why we have the memory bandwidth we have. That is why we have the teraflops we have, because it's what we heard from game developers was required to achieve native 4K. Now, similarly, for what Sony have said, this doesn't mean that I'm going to require developers to do this. They're going to be able to decide on how to take that six teraflops of power and do what they think is best with their game. But I do know, and this is where the smack talk starts, that 4.2 teraflops is not enough power to do true, true 4K. So I feel like our product aspired a little bit higher, but we have going to still have a few asterisks around the 4K experiences we deliver on our box, end quote. Now, there are a whole bunch of different things we can start picking apart with these different statements. And honestly, it's going to probably be a 40-minute video if I was to do everything. But here are a couple of the too long didn't reads. The first is that I'm still not convinced 6T flops is going to be super duper enough for 4K. It depends on what their definition of 4K is. For example, if you're talking about just natively increasing the resolution but no further... Uh, additional details in the scene then yes they could if you take the 1.31 um, or rather if you take 6T flops divide it by 1.31 that's how much advantage the Xbox One Scorpio has over the you know native Xbox One so technically speaking the GPU is powerful enough particularly when you start to factor in the advantages of Polaris or Vega we know it's more efficient, it's more power, 
uh, efficient and it's basically just a better GPU architecture than the GCN iterations which Microsoft used and Sony used for the PlayStation 4 vanilla and the Xbox One vanilla respectively. However, I'm still not 100% convinced we're going to be getting true 4K gaming Nirvana, but 6 teraflops unquestionably is still better than 4.2. But the real crux of this, however, is definitely the memory bandwidth. Now, assuming he did not misspeak, or the interviewer did not mistype, or the person writing the email, basically, the, 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 no, there was no wires crossed. Assuming this number is accurate, it means that Microsoft have subtly decided to let us know that they have increased the memory bandwidth. And I don't think, if it was... An actual number that they are going for 384 I don't think he screwed up I think he purposefully added this in so that members of the press and gamers start to pick it up and that's my assumption he could have genuinely screwed up either way so he might have not meant to say it because he didn't want to give the game away that it was going to be more powerful but at this point with the PS4 Pro's specs set in stone there's not much Sony could do anywho now, in theory, 320 gigabytes per second is enough for a 6 TFLOP GPU. You can start doing the mathematics yourself, but just to lead you through them, the Polaris-based RX 480, which puts out around 6 TFLOPs itself, requires about 256 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth to do this. Now, some of this is because the architecture is more refined, um, obviously because of latter GCN, uh, GCN revisions, as I've just mentioned a, a few moments ago. So we know that, assuming it is even Polaris-based and not even slightly ahead, which Mark Cerny for the PlayStation 4 Pro did say that they are taking some technology for the PS4 Pro of not just Polaris, but several generations above it. So we can assume, and presumption is not necessarily equating to correctness, that Microsoft have probably been offered very similar or have asked for very similar technology. Even if they have not, 320 gigabytes per second is sufficient bandwidth for the for the Scorpio. Now, we can also start to say, well, okay, maybe it's the CPU that's eating it up. We know from the Xbox One, um, various leaks way back in the day, the SDK leaks and various other insider information, as well as the PlayStation 4 mod I add, which of course during development was known as Orbis, it reserves about 20 gigabytes per second for the Jaguar processor. Now, just to clarify, the Jaguar is running at about 1.75 gigahertz in Xbox One. It's running at 1.6 in the PS4. We're not quite sure what the Scorpio is running, however. It could be a Jaguar derivative. For example, it could be Jaguar at much higher clock speeds. It could be Puma. But even if we say aggressively, it's Puma on 14nm running at ludicrous clock speeds of like 2.5 gigahertz, 2.6 gigahertz. Hell, let's even be really nuts and say that it's running at 2.8 gigahertz. Really, the memory bandwidth requirements are not going to, you know, go that much higher. They're not going to be much more than like 30 gigabytes per second. The purpose of this, by the way, is not to go through an in-depth analysis of the processor. It's just to show you that memory bandwidth still doesn't really scale that much because even if you say that you've hit the figure of 290 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, the remaining bandwidth still should be sufficient, uh, especially when you start to take into account uh, inefficiencies and, you know, theoretical bandwidth is not necessarily indicative of real-world performance. Basically speaking, the Scorpio should have enough which means that there's a couple of different things going on, assuming this figure is accurate. And once again, I'm assuming the figure is accurate for the purpose of this video. The first is that the Scorpio has had a small spec bump on the GPU, and we could start to do a lot of maths, which I won't go into in this video because it's going to start getting too lengthy. But essentially, we're looking at most likely with the Scorpio a Vega derivative. It's probably not an RX 480-based card, simply because... It would require the GPU to be running at around 1300 megahertz. That's too much. It would put out too much heat. So more likely they're using Vega based GPU because A, the time frame, B, it would put out less heat. 
so you're most likely looking at Vega. Uh, by the way, I've already done a PlayStation, um, I'm sorry, an Xbox One in-depth analysis on how the GPU, CPU, and architectures work. If you do so want to check that out, I'll link an article with it all in the video description. So you, by all means, you can check that out if you want this more in depth. My assumption, therefore, is either they're running a Vega part that's got around the mid-40 CUs, which is clocked at around 8 150 to let's say 950 megahertz and that part would put out around 60 flops so it's possible Microsoft are trying to shoot a little bit higher maybe 6.5 T flops maybe for example 60 flops was like the bare minimum specifications they were going for another possibility is that they just want that extra bandwidth it could be just for sales and marketing for example if they can say that we've got 384 compared to the PlayStation 4's pros, like 212 or whatever it was, that's definitely an advantage in their corner. Or there is something else in the machine, for example, sharing or whatever else that they feel is a requirement, for example, the way it interacts with Windows 10 and whatever else they're doing. So that's definitely another possibility. We don't know. Maybe they're adding another little processor inside the, inside the system, which is for like streaming games better or maybe for sharing games better and that actually requires some of the memory bandwidth or maybe that's for the connect sensor or whatever it is unfortunately it's just not enough information i don't think they're using zen um, because i think it would push the console price up way too much and i don't think that it's going to be really worth it for them so my theory is that either a um albert Penalo screwed up when he gave the interview or there was just some screw up during the interview or b um the bandwidth has been raised just to give them a little bit of extra wiggle room or c the other specs of the console have been slightly tweaked but i'm a little suspicious about that it's possible that they have been uh, it could be based upon yields either way i think it's quite interesting as a as a talking point hopefully it'll be cleared up in the next couple of days um, one of the folks at Microsoft will comment on this on Twitter or whatever and say hey this is what it is finally um, my opinion on Microsoft of checkerboard rendering I think they will also be using it for certain games because I just think it is what it is I have no particular issue with checkerboard rendering um, I probably should do a whole video on how checkerboard rendering works huh but for the sake of this video, you just know that it saves a lot of performance. It's been talked about a couple of times on this channel before. Um, Gorilla Games have used similar technologies with temporal reproject reprojection, excuse me. Um, and it's quite an interesting bit of technology because essentially you're not rendering the game at a full internal resolution you're rendering it at considerably lower at parts of the screen and then doing it bit by bit and it's it's not in my opinion lying on Sony's part but it's not also being 100% honest um, but they have to be fair been quite upfront about the fact that they are going with checkerboard rendering the problem is if you're just the average Bob on the street you're not going to know what checkerboard rendering is. So it's like, yeah, they're kind of saying it, but they're kind of not. Um, and it's also quite interesting because if you notice the images of checkerboard rendering, I did in one of the PlayStation 4 Pro videos I did, I think it was the announcement video, that you can definitely see some softness around the edges. So whether Microsoft are going to have to do the same thing, I just don't know. And how... 4k on the scorpio is going to compare to let's say 4k on a high-end pc with all the settings at max uh, i have my doubts i i don't think it's going to compete with a bleeding edge pc i just don't but i do think it's going to be really nice if developers are given the option uh built in that just like uh naughty dog have done with some games and other developers have done with some games like on the playstation 4 pro like tomb raider and they can just be like okay you know what i want to play uh, let's say 1440p or 1080p or whatever at 60fps with better quality graphics or I want to play at 4k at 30fps with 
the best quality graphics so I'd rather play at 4k at 60 FPS but yeah okay the graphics are going to be degraded quite a bit but it just looks better on my TV set because of the size of it and the proximity I am to the television so there's a whole bunch of stuff to really take into account anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care bye for now